So on our side, we had to build workshop number one, uh, diaspora and job creation through social and commercial enterprise. So we had first uh, an introduction by uh, Nde, my colleague here, who was emphasizing on how to succeed to become uh, an entrepreneur through her personal experience uh, as an activist. She was also trying to explain and to detail the main constraints uh, to success. And actually, uh, our workshop was divided into three parts, but the first, the opportunities, the challenges and the solution. We had three speakers and both of them uh, ignite somehow uh, those, two, uh, those three uh, targets. So what are the opportunities around and how can they be developed was mainly uh, the part of our uh, first uh, speaker and then. Then we had a, a, a speech by Philip uh, Pedersen from the Danish uh, Mission Council. Uh, he was highlighting uh, and, uh, the, the importance of the civil society organization and diaspora, especially regarding their potential and how they can contribute to have a, to job uh, creation in Africa, uh, how they need to be ready to sacrifice their own interests and to support and to create development through education and job creation. Then we had also a speech by one entrepreneur from uh, Congo Brazzaville, Mr. Edgar Combo, who was highlighting also, and mainly, uh, I would say, the, 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 the challenges, how difficult it is to make, uh, understand the potential investors, uh, the, the need to change uh, their image uh, of Africa and the need to invest ethically and being a right bridge uh, with an appropriate approach. So, and he, as a, an entrepreneur, was encouraging doing business. So just briefly highlighting uh, what their main intervention was uh, so that we could divide our, um, our presentation into in three parts, like opportunities, Um, I will say here on the presentation, uh, we have as a diaspora to uh, the, the knowledge of our, our given countries and uh, region. Uh, we will, this will lead to uh, a solution uh, later that will be developed later. Sorry. Um, we notice also the development of informal economy that can be uh, uh, a source of uh, uh, opportunity like uh, agriculture, uh, energy, uh, renewable energy, uh, because these are mainly the, the, the main skills that are present here in uh, Nordic countries. So we're also discussing about the funding opportunities in Scandinavia and the importance of building uh, the bridges between the diaspora and the, the different funding agencies, maybe private uh, or go governmental institution. Uh, we highlighted that also as a, a, a potential uh, opportunity or sector to, to be worth investing in is uh, the educational system all through uh, on the continent. Among those opportunities, we have also the, uh, the growing micro industry where through uh, the, the, the potential or uh, the, the, the available uh, resources can be uh, of all the diaspora, uh, can be one sector to be uh, addressed and targeted. Uh, we highlighted also, and it was a bit difficult for us to include it among the opportunity or challenges, is to have uh, the diaspora uh, being established as a, a, a lobby uh, platform or institution to be able to, to influence the policy makers like uh, we're discussing taking the example of some farmers uh, back in Africa who are not benefiting from the subsidies that European farmers are um, getting uh, all through Europe. Okay, um, we, through one of 
our speaker, and I think it's uh, valid also for all the, uh, the Nordic countries. Uh, the, the, the sectors that were highlighted were uh, where the, the, the cooperation uh, uh, can be uh, at some point uh, strengthened. Uh, identify this agriculture, like uh, I said uh, earlier, energy, renewable energy, infrastructure, of course, uh, roads, bridges, water sanitation. And also we're uh, talking about the opportunities, uh, funding opportunities available through the uh, Danish Mission uh, Council, through Mr. Pedersen, for this uh, one project of one uh, delegate. Um, what else? Important also to, 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 to target diaspora, and to have it uh, identified as a resource and an important network in development that could be useful for these funding agencies because the diaspora know better their, uh, their country. And the last sector identifies, of course, the uh, food industry. Okay. Okay. So in terms of uh, how, how many minutes do we have? Two. Two? Okay. Right. Try to make it short. So uh, to just read it. So uh, among the potentials, we identified the access to education for the younger uh, generation, both uh, in the diaspora uh, countries and in the country uh, of origin. Access to a better health uh, care system and facilities, the potential of expanding uh, uh, the opportunities through French speaking and Portuguese speaking African countries, building our relationship with governments, access to the Nordic countries and the openness of the Nordic countries towards Africa and the resources available there. Uh, we spoke also about this Danida business partnership uh, platform. I think it's a project that failed but still uh, some resources are still uh, available and can still be used and the importance of having uh, diaspora as a network. To dare to go with Mention it. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid uh, to, to push people, to convince people to dare to go and invest uh, in Africa. So for the uh, solutions, uh, one uh, good point was mentioned is to create a common platform of all the uh, diaspora uh, organization present in uh, uh, Nordic uh, countries. Uh, in order to merge uh, their opportunities and skills and to be able at some point to, 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 be, uh, to become a lobby for policy change. And also to create funds to support organizations and entrepreneurs, create an organized way to work and help the underprivileged to start their own uh, companies. For the challenges, uh, institutional weaknesses, unfortunately were we spoke about uh, corruption and uh, the different problems created by the, the, the local uh, institution back in Africa. The fear and insecurity of the diaspora to invest back in their country or probably in their region. The lack of support on the ground uh, by the local people seen as a threat. Uh, the dependency culture, well, I'm not going to, to expand on this, but it's an important factor and of course the European policy towards Africa such as uh, subsidies and also the poor negotiation skills that uh, diaspora's uh, organization might, might have uh, towards uh, a fund, funding agencies. Also we were highlighting the diaspora seen as an opposition group, might be seen by some country. The lack of time from the African diaspora to due to their own uh, constraints, working uh, and own uh, commitments, lack of funding for diaspora organizations in terms of running costs, and also the last but not least, lack of skills in building business plan. Yeah. still have 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, I would just say that um, uh, we really went through these things and we decided to divide it according to what uh, it is and then People in our group, we have 30 seconds. If we forget anything, you did 30 seconds is for you to add it on. <laughs>
Okay. Ja. 